I love you so much because you are me and I am you have so much potential. There is one thing that no one can take away from you, your soul. And that is your feelings, that is your ideas, society, the nation you rule. That is your virtues, your vices. Which will you listen to? The fluffy parts, the thorns and pain, the grass soft, the concrete cold, hard, unforgiving makes the road to move ahead, walk forward, press on, be yourself. It's a disease. I can't help it. I have to be right. I crave perfection. I am not a know-it-all. I just like to be correct. Pardon me if I take pride in showing my intellect. When others are better than me, I get upset. My throat feels like it's closing when I get an A- minus on a test. When they find a cure, I'll change my direction. But for now, I have to be right. I crave perfection. Endless blood ran stereotypes create toxic solutions of illness. Our minds are complex with our twisted conceptions of mentality. The definition of mental illness spirals out of conscious control. We lose sanity, dreaming of perfection. A clean slate free of smudges from those wrapped in their own ignorance. Perceived as a flaw, recognized as an illness. Rejection is neglection. Indefinite until those suffering reach a level of tranquility. Conflate to blend together. Mental illness is not a definition in a dusty old dictionary in the top of your grandma's bookshelf. Mental illness is a lifestyle. Prosperity at its finest. Wake up. Smell reality and forget the coffee. This is real. It's time we accept. Crush the repent. The idea of exception is lost in our own perception. I'm not the only kid who grew up this way. Surrounded by people who used to say that rhyme, about sticks and stones, as if broken bones hurt more than the names we got called, and we got called them all. So broken heartstrings bled the blues as we tried to empty ourselves so we'd feel nothing. Don't tell me that hurts less than a broken bone. She was eight years old. Our first day of grade three when she got called ugly. We both got moved to the back of the class so we would stop getting bombarded by spitballs, but the school halls were a battleground when we found ourselves outnumbered day after wretched day we used to stay inside for recess because outside was worse. Outside we'd have to rehearse running away or learn to stand still like statues giving no clue that we were there. Kids used to say that she looks like a wrong answer that someone tried to erase but couldn't quite get the job done. He was a broken branch grafted onto a different family tree. Adopted. Not because his parents opted for a different destiny. He was three when he became a mixed drink of one part left alone and two parts tragedy. Started therapy in the 8th grade, had a personality made up of tests and pills, lived like uphills were mountains and the downhills were cliffs, four-fifths suicidal, a tidal wave of antidepressants, an adolescence of being called pauper. One part because of the pills, and 99 parts because of the cruelty. He tried to kill himself in grade 10, when a kid who could still go home to mom and dad had the audacity to tell him, get over it. As if depression is something that can be remedied by any of the contents found in a first aid kit. To this day, he is a stick of TNT, lit from both ends. Sometimes becoming drug free has less to do with addiction and more to do with sanity. If you can't see anything beautiful about yourself, get a better mirror. Look a little closer, stare a little longer because there's something inside of you that made you keep trying despite everyone who told you to quit. You built a cast around your broken heart and you signed it yourself. You signed it, they were wrong. We are graduating members from the class of We Made It. Not the faded echoes of voices crying out names that will never hurt me because of course they did. But our lives will only ever always continue to be a balancing act that has less to do with pain and more to do with beauty. I miss the breath of sun, the soft kiss of sky, the wiggly warmth of living. The heaven that is our life, our little love affair with the world. Whatever happened to mine? Mine is gone and gone and gone. Alone and cold and sick and alone and bitter and alone. My light, my world, my life flickered out. And in the dark, no one knows you're desperate, holding yourself to their lives. 
In the dark, no one knows they keep you buying lunch instead of a rope. Sometimes in the dark, you know that you can't choose goodbye. Please, no more goodbyes. I never thought this would be the life I lead, the overhanging diseases and the struggle they loudly heed. Like the overhang on a broken house, these issues were always present, but the money was never there in order to fix it. So bottles clanged to the bottom of the floor like the pangs of defeat echoing, a soldier's battle cry, or a young girl's unwillingness to die. My father, the man I saw as a statue of gilded gold, drank to the darkness that began to surround his soul. Now don't tell me he was dark or disturbed human being. He was just reigning inside, saying, it's okay to not be okay. And I, trying to find the peace of the vast calming ocean, that brilliant sea of blue, like the sunrise on a beach morning, fantastic and all you can. So inject it into my veins like the tingling of a treatment that reminds me of the grief inside my bones, yet at the same time brings me to a tranquil home. And now I rise like the phoenix from the ashes because all the pain and all the hurt and the fall will never undermine the strength in us all. And sure, there are days where I want nothing more than to hide in the blankets of my mother's comfort, but the world isn't slowing down and it isn't going to. We all need the power to keep going to. So get up and stand tall and let your voice be heard for you define yourself, and that is my last word.